beautiful handcrafts and I was gonna do a live video but I decided that it wouldn't make any sense because once I put this stuff in the pot then there's nothing really for you to watch me do I'm gonna go warp the loom so instead I'm just gonna make this a part video so here is the merino the lots and lots and lots of merino and while I do love this electric blue I don't want a bunch of electric blue and I'm pretty sure you guys don't either so I'm gonna go ahead and over dye it I went through the closet at Praxis and I've got something that says navy but then it says purple so let's have a look at what it really is and it doesn't really have to be much of anything as long as it is something that is darker than the blue okay that looks like that is going to be a purple so we're about to find out how that is going to turn out now, ideally I would like to use this gigantic pot here that I don't even want to know what's to say 60 quarts on it but I have to be able to lift the pot and I've been having bouts of tendonitis so lifting a 60 quart pot, pot full of water and uh, fiber is probably not the best idea so I'm gonna put this guy away and we're going to go with these two pots now I'm dealing with merino here I think you all know how I feel about Merino by now, but we know it felt gloriously. And so instead of my usual of, you know, heating the pot and putting fiber in, I'm going to put the fiber in and fill the pot. I'm not going to measure the fiber and I'm not going to measure the dye. Uh, if this is your, you know, if you're beginning, you probably should do that. If you're looking for a specific shade, you probably should do that, but I'm not really, so it's perfectly okay. It's gonna turn out however it turns out, and I'm gonna be okay with it. So let me go ahead and fill it up, and then I will show you what it looks like. I have both pots on now. They're on medium, making sure, because last time I let the pot boil, normally I do everything in a crock pot. You know, the temperature's are already taken care of. But uh, there aren't any crock pots here at Praxis. I might have to rectify that. And so they're on the stove, and I just have to be a little more careful, especially with this merino. It's very unforgiving. And I mixed up the dye. And I'm, I'm a pretty happy fan of doing everything in the crock pot, but since this is such a big batch, I really needed to do it separate. Then I'll judge it from there. Now I can always add more dye. I can't take away dye. And I remember to wear my gloves. Let's go ahead and rinse that. Now, because the pot is cold, I can go ahead and stir it just a little bit, make sure I've got even coverage. And I'm not dyeing a whole separate color. I just want something darker than the electric blue, so. But I do wanna make sure it has an opportunity to get where it needs to go. This one's going to need some more dye, so I'm going to mix up a little more dye citric acid, pour it into that one, and then I will show you the roving. So I know you're trying to figure out why it is I'm setting up dyes on the washing machine. <laughs> it's because I'm not the only one in the studio, and so I forgot to bring my microphone. And I'm trying to avoid uh, recording other people's conversations. So at any rate, here we are with the roving i actually don't know what kind of roving it is it came in my nancy stash and uh well whatever it was it was cool so i had this pre-soaking and it doesn't really want to pre-soak which kind of gives me some thoughts about what it actually might be i'm gonna go ahead and tip that out okay because i need to replace it 
the water in there with hot water, which I'm going to heat in an electric kettle and then pour over top. I was really considering uh, just using the same purple. I kind of wanted something that breaks. But then when I looked in the closet again, I saw this fuchsia. And I was like, yeah, I'm feeling like that. So I'm just going to sprinkle some fuchsia over top of the fiber. I don't know if fuchsia breaks. I guess we'll find out. Well, at least this one anyway. Ooh, that was a little too much. Okay, we're gonna stop there. Now, it does look like it's breaking a little bit into a light pink and into a fuchsia. I am going to put the hot water over top of it. it kinda looks like an ice cream sundae at the moment. I'm really enjoying that. And then I'll cover it with the plastic wrap and let it soak. Then you'll get to see what it looks like. Okay, peoples, here we go. It fully exhausted. As you can see, this water is pretty much clear. I'm switch over to the other side uh, where the fuchsia is. I took the leftover dye from the fuchsia and put it into this batch of blue. And it's got some really nice, you know, purple inside of it. I'm gonna let this cool and then dry and fluff it up. And then you'll have a really good idea on how well it over dyed. I'm home now and this is the dye job. Look how this turned out. I am loving it. This is kind of a little teeny bit of that, what that electric blue looked like before I put it in the pot. And this is afterwards, loving this. Now this purple right here is from that extra uh, fuchsia that I poured over into the electric blue. And this is just wonderful. I'm really happy about the way it over -dyed. Look at this almost black in some of the places. Turned out beautifully. So I will have some of this over -dyed in my Etsy store. And it should give a little more variety to the, all of the electric blue and red and burgundy that's already there. Thank you very much for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you are a subscriber, click the like button and share with your fiber dyeing friends. If you would like to support my channel, you can buy me a coffee through the link below. Or you can purchase some of this 40 pounds of fiber from my Etsy shop. Take care of yourself.